Ginkgo biloba has conquered time. One million years ago, the tree could only be found in parts of China. It has since gone global. The story of ginkgo begins in Chinese agriculture and ends in Chinese medicine. Renowned herbalist Li Shizhen theorized ginkgo's medical effects according to the five-phase theory. The seed is white, Li wrote, like golden ore. The lung was the organ of gold, and so ginkgo could treat disorders of the lung. In 1053, the writer Mei Yao-chun sent his friend, famed essayist, O Yuang Shou, the gift of ginkgo, a plant native to his hometown. Mei's mother had died and he had returned home to the distant south. Missing his old life in the bustling capital city, he wrote to his friend, Taste the nuts and you will feel as if I were still there. From this exchange, ginkgo spread throughout China, from southern wild to city garden to pharmacopoeia. Through the ages, ginkgo became part of the Chinese landscape, a cultural marker of the civilization. The story of ginkgo in Japan is quite different. It was the roots and flowers rather than the seeds that shaped the cultural image of ginkgo for the Japanese. To Japanese eyes, the aerial roots looked like nipples. From the 18th century, new mothers would pray before the ginkgo tree to be blessed with milk for their children. But to the Japanese, ginkgo also had a sinister edge. While women prayed to the tree for milk, travelers were warned off the tree after dark. It was a shapeshifter which bloomed at night. The tree could appear as a monk holding a golden bell and would steal your lamplight and leave you alone in the dark. Unlike the Chinese, the Japanese never put such a powerful and dangerous thing in their gardens. Violation of this taboo, they believed, would bring misfortune or even death. Rather, for the Japanese, ginkgo's primary principle was a nourishment, and it became an essential part of their diet as a digestive. Today in the West, it is the ginkgo leaf rather than the flower, seed or root that captures the imagination. The ginkgo leaf has spawned an industry as a memory enhancing herb. This despite very little medical evidence. Our image of ginkgo, like those of Takugawa Japan and early modern China, is a cultural construct. The Japanese read ginkgo's flowers and roots into distinct mythologies of life and danger. The Chinese wrote its seeds into a system based on a theory of correspondences that could capture the world. This tells us something about these cultures. What does our use of ginkgo's leaves tell us about ours?